Hi all, I am Dipya Somakumar and in this video, we are going to learn how to build a single neuron regression model using TensorFlow from scratch. Now, let's begin by first importing all the necessary libraries. Import numpy as np import pandas as pd import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt now we are going to import the train test split because in the future we are going to perform train test split so from sklearn dot model underscore selection import train underscore test underscore split now we are performing a single neuron regression so we will have to import the tensorflow library so let's import import tensorflow as pf Let's run this. Now, we have successfully imported all the required libraries. Now, we are going to import the data set. We are working with Google Colab. So, importing the data set is in a different style over here. Over here, on the left hand corner, you see a files tab. Click on that and then you will see an upload button over here. Click on upload button. Go to the respective file where you have your data and then click on open. So diamonds.csv open. Now our data set is getting uploaded. I will provide the link for the data set in the description below. Now let's write the code to import the data set onto Google Colab. Let's write df is equals to pd dot read underscore csv diamonds dot csv. Now let's look at the head of our data set. So our data set looks something like this. It has an unnamed column. It has a caret column. It has a cut column. It has a color clarity column. Now, if you observe, the unnamed column is not required for our data analysis. Hence, we are going to drop that column. Now, if you observe color, cut and clarity, these are not numerical data. And we have studied that in order to perform any machine learning task, we need all numerical data. Similarly, in order to perform a neuron regression, we all need numerical data. We cannot deal with non-numerical data. Hence, we will be using label encoder to convert all the non-numerical data into numerical data. Now, first, we will drop the unnamed column. How do we do that? df dot drop. unnamed remember our pc does not know where this unnamed is located as humans we know that unnamed is a column now we'll have to specify it to the pc that unnamed is a column how do we do that by writing axis is equals to one Now, if you observe that the df.drop does not have an in place equals to true parameter. So, the changes won't be permanent. In order to make the changes permanent, we'll have to reassign it onto our df. Now, we will convert all the non-numerical data into numerical data in, by using label encoder. Let's start from sklearn 
dot preprocessing import label encoder. Now we are going to create an object of label encoder. Let's call it Ellie label encoder. Now which are the columns we have to transform? We have to transform the cut column, the color column and the clarity column. So we will write Ellie dot fit underscore transform pf color. Now look at the Ellie dot fit underscore transform. Over here, we do not have an in place equals to true parameter. Hence, the changes that we have made will not reflect onto our data frame. Hence, we we'll have to reassign this le.fit underscore transform onto our data frame. Uh, we can write color over here. So, df color equals le.fit underscore transform. We can repeat the same steps for cut and clarity. So we will change the color into cut over here. And we'll change the color into clarity over here. Because these were the columns which were non-numerical. Now we have successfully converted all our non-numerical columns into numerical columns. Now we can check our data frame. Df dot head So the Cut column was a non-numerical column. Now it has got converted into a numerical column. The color column was non-numerical. It has got converted into a numerical column. The clarity column was non-numerical. Now it has got converted into a numerical column. Now, before doing neural networks or before building a neuron regression, what we have to do is we have to scale all our variables. How do we do that? There are two ways to scale. There is min-max scalar and then there is standard scalar. We will be using the standard scalar over here. Now, let's do the scaling of our data. Why do we do the scaling of the data? We do scaling so that all our data points are scaled to one unit so that it becomes easier to make inferences from the data. So, let's start standard scalar from from sklearn dot preprocessing import standard scalar. Now we have to apply this standard scalar onto all the columns in our data frame. How do we do that? We will use a for loop to apply this standard scalar to each and every column onto the data frame. Now let's write our for loop for call in BF. Now we'll create an object for our standard scalar. Let's call it SC, standard scalar. Do not forget the brackets. Now we will fit this SC onto all our columns. SC dot fit underscore transform. We are transforming all the columns in our pf that is we are transforming the rows and columns so we'll be using double brackets over here since there is no in place equals to true parameter over here we will reassign our data frame columns into this sc dot fit underscore transform so let's write df call equals sc dot fit underscore transform df call now let's see how our data frame looks like df dot head now we have successfully scaled all our variables now 
all these variables have only one unit. Now the next step is to divide our data set into X and Y. Over here, our target variable is our price. That is our Y variable is our price. And all other variables are our independent variables or the features. So how do we divide the data set into X and Y? We write X is equal to DF dot drop. We have to drop price. Now, the computer does not know which column has to be dropped or it does not know whether a column should be dropped or a row should be dropped. Hence, we will be using axis is equals to 1 over here. Now, let's see how our x looks like. x. So, our x looks like something like this. Here, we do not have our price column. We have all other columns except the price column. Now, we have successfully divided our data into x. Now, we have to divide into y. What is y? y is nothing but our dependent variable. In this case, our y is the price. y is equals to pf price. Now, let's look at y. So, we have the price column over here. Now, the next step is to divide our data set into training and testing data. X train, X test, Y train, Y test is equals to train underscore test underscore split x comma y comma test underscore size let's give test size to be 0 0.2 and let's assign random state is equals to 1 now let's look at the shape of x train how do we do that x train dot shape So, X train has around 43,000 rows and 9 columns. All this while, we were performing machine learning. We were performing logistic regression, linear regression, SVM, decision trees. Today, we will be performing neuron regression. Neuron regression is a bit different. Now, let's start with neuron regression. How do we do that? First, we will create an object of the model model is equals to pf dot keras dot sequential so here we will write the layers in the next line pf dot keras dot layers dot tens. Since it's a single neuron, we will write one over here and we will mention. So we write one and we write input underscore dimension. We have total 9 features over here. So, in input underscore dimension, we will be writing 9. And that's it. Our model is ready over here. Now, we have to fit this model onto X train Y train. So, let's write train underscore model is equals to model dot fit. What do we fit? X train and Y train. Epochs. Epochs are the number of forward and backward propagations. So let's give the epochs to be around 50. 
and batch size equals 10. Before writing the trained underscore model, we have to write model.compile and we are using stochastic gradient descent optimizer over here and our loss function is MAC since we have already studied that the loss function for a regression model is nothing but our mean squared error. Over here, we will be using a special kind of gradient descent which is nothing but mini batch gradient descent. Over here, we are mentioning the batch size to be 10. So now our model has got completely trained over here. Now, in the first epoch, we see that the loss was 0 0.1521. And let's see in the last epoch, what is the loss? Okay, it's still computing it. You will see that the loss is falling like anything from 0 0.15. It has fallen to 0 0.11. Let's see what happens in the 50th epoch. Now, we will plot this loss function, plt dot plot, so that it becomes much more easier for our eyes to understand how the loss is reducing each time. plt dot plot change underscore model dot history loss so our loss function looks something like this it was initially at 0 0.15 it has come down to 0 0.11 so in the last epoch if you observe the loss has reduced to 0 0.1185 now let's predict our model since now we have already trained our model we have to predict the model let's write my pred is equal to model dot predict we have to predict X test. So we have successfully predicted all our y values. If you want, you can check the y pred. Let's write y pred. So you have an array of prices over here. Now we have to check for the accuracy of the model. How do we do that? We are going to import r squared mean squared error, mean absolute error from the sklearn.metrics library. From sklearn.metrics import r2 underscore score mean underscore squared error mean underscore absolute error now, we are going to print the R squared. How do we do that? Print F R squared is nothing but R2 underscore score by test by print. Now, we will print the mean squared error print f m s e m mean underscore squared underscore error by test by bread next we will print the rmse the root mean squared error print F R M S E R M S E is nothing but the root of mean square error. So we write N P dot S Q R T square root mean 
underscore squared squared underscore mean over here mean underscore squared as underscore error by test by thread now we have to print the mean absolute error print f m a e the mean absolute error it is nothing but m mean underscore absolute underscore error by test by print Let's run this. After running, we get an R squared of 88%. What does R squared of 88% mean? 88% of the variation in the price of diamonds are determined by the above features. Our MAC, that is mean squared error, is quite low. It is 0.11, which is a good sign. Our RMSC is again low, which is 0.33. And our MAE is 0.21. So we have successfully created a single neuron regression model. I hope the steps for single neuron regression model, the training model, the testing model, the predicting model, creating the epochs and the loss function graph and all the evaluation metrics are clear for one and all. 